It's Dustin with TechMD coming at you with an iPhone 11 screen or back glass replacement. He technically needs just the charge port, but we were able to work out and strike a deal to just do both uh, the back glass and the charge port. Um, and I will eventually have a charge port video for this, but for now, I don't uh, have one. Anyways, if you are looking to get your back glass replaced, you need to type in this exactly into eBay. iPhone 11, and then the color, so red, with small parts. And then you wanna make sure you have all the small parts because it includes everything and makes this job super easy. If you don't, it's gonna make it really difficult. Next thing you're gonna need is definitely an eye plastic tool to get under the battery. This is gonna help remove the battery easily. And then you're going to need the tools to work on the device. <clears throat> this is a, a motherboard screwdriver and I can't remember what the hell it's called, but it looks like this. I use grip tools, <sighs> uh, it's standoff screwdriver, I don't know. Um, then you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver, uh, a double zero screwdriver. And these are all grip tools that you can find in the link in the description. Uh, buying parts and tools from us is always helpful. And then you also need um, a Y, triple, um, double zero, I think. Brain is not working today. Double zero Y screwdriver, which is also the blue uh, screwdriver from the grip tools, which you can find in the link in the description uh, under injure gadgets. I also use iFlex from time to time for different stuff uh, and maybe some tweezers and an eye sesame tool would be helpful in this job. Um, and then also, finally, you're going to need to get this mat here. So I run this for about three minutes to five minutes at 150 degrees Celsius with this mat, or 120 degrees Celsius. And so once it gets nice and warm, you'll want to use a rag, plastic, gloves, something to protect your hands so you're not burning yourself. I'm always losing all my rags. Yeah. We're actually at a, a place called Beans and Brews in Utah, um, specifically Saratoga. Uh, this guy's about to take a flight out and he was in a hurry to get his phone fixed. But um, I had the charge port integrated into the phone, but not the actual charge port for the phone. And I initially thought it was pretty expensive because I remember them being about $70. Uh, but come to find out the iPhone 11 doesn't have this little Apple thing soldered to the charge port. Uh, you'll see that in my 11 Pro Max charge port repair. It's kind of a pain in the butt phone to do. So hopefully you already know how to open up an iPhone 11, but I just go around where it's nice and warm and twist up. I'm going to open it up and fold it up like a book. Just move the cables over a little bit. Not too much, you don't want to damage them. And then we're going to spatially organize these screws. So exactly how I take them out is how they come back in. First things first is we want to definitely disconnect and verify there's no water damage. I don't see any water damage, so looks like we're golden. I was surprised to see already a broken charge port in this phone, but when it comes to devices, don't be surprised by anything. Something obviously happened and he's not sure what happened to his phone either, but um, we know it's a charge port because the, <clears throat> the cable sits in there perfectly flush all the way up to the frame. So if if it wasn't doing that, then that would mean that there's something clogged in there. You'd want to dig that out and clean it up. But since it sits in there perfectly flush, it's definitely not bad. So I'm just disconnecting and those were tri-point screws that I removed. And that's the first part of 
doing this repair. Oh, yeah, I was gonna show you guys. See how it sits in nice and flush? If it was clogged, it wouldn't be sitting in all the way. And you just wanna take some titanium twi tip tweezers to dig that out. Okay, so our next um, is to, let's go ahead and disconnect all these cables here. Now you can use a plastic tool or your fingernails. I like my fingernails because it's dead skin, so who cares? But you can, if you don't have any, then I'd recommend a plastic sludger to remove these cables. Now, if you're doing a, a front camera, all you have to do, a rear camera is just remove these two things here. And we have to definitely remove the screen. That's not, that's not something you can avoid. And we're gonna take a, a Phillips screwdriver here and we're going to go ahead and remove the screws for the top cover for your organizing my screws here a little bit. Uh, remove the top cover for the rear camera here. This is where tweezers can come in handy. Sometimes things don't like to come out properly. All right, remember how it goes in. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna take our new unit here and we're gonna go ahead and pull off this here. Also, you might want T7000 glue when doing this repair. Please, please guys, watch this repair whole, fully through before buying the parts or anything like that. You wanna just make sure you have the right thing. Uh, you may ask, hey Dustin, why aren't you using a laser machine? Well, laser machines are for repair shops and we are mobile. So this is gonna teach you how to do it cheaper than those repair shops are going to charge you and you're still gonna get high quality Apple parts. So I'm just going to pop out the camera. I'm just getting to the edge of the camera and just uh, softly prying and pull up a little bit on the cables here and see if you can get it up. Still wants to be a little bit of a pain, so keep on prying. There we go. And so you put this on the new frame. Now, if you're just doing a camera rear camera replacement, just put the new camera on and put it all back together. Watch the end of the video if you need to. Uh, learn how to do that. So I'm gonna put that together right now while I'm thinking about it and making sure I don't need anything else. I don't looks like it. Actually, yes, I'm gonna need this piece over here. So what we're gonna do is take out the rear camera <coughs> and transfer this piece. Sometimes the new frames come with every little detail and sometimes they don't. And my particular frame unfortunately did not come with this. If your frame is missing something, you're gonna to need to make sure you transfer it. It's really important to have every component in the phone because each component does its own thing and there's a reason why Apple put it there. I'm just picking this loose here. Let's see if we can lift this up. Well, my tweezers are a little bent out of shape. I've only done like maybe one or two frame replacements on the iPhone 11, so. This may take me a few minutes longer than if I knew exactly everything, like the iPhone X, XR, I've done a gazillion of those already. But only a few of these, because it's pretty uncommon phone to break the back already, or even the charge board. So this cable looks like it's connected underneath this bracket here. So let's go ahead and remove this bracket if we can. And this is where we need the motherboard uh, driver here to remove these <sighs> mounted screws. I, can, I cannot think of the name. It's terrible right now. 
Okay, there's our little piece that we need to transfer over to the new phone. The reason why I want to put that camera in right away is because I don't want it exposed too long or it could damage it. Obviously, you don't want any dirt or dust on your lens either, so those are all good reasons to do this right away when you pull out that camera. You can leave the camera all the way to the ends, but I just want to get it done now. As I remember, the iPhone 11 uh, frame replacement is a little bit of a challenge. So you do probably want prior experience fixing phones. I would recommend. If this is your first repair, it's going to be quite the challenge, guys. Okay, we got one more motherboard screw that I have left here. Put it right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the SIM tray. The SIM tray is important because you gotta be able to have the network. <laughs> and then I take the, the tool to remove the bottom screws and just pop this out. Pentalope driver. Fingernails would be ideal here, or a plastic tool, if you can get to it with your fingernails. Just want to unclip these cables underneath that bracket there and just remove. You're just carefully moving these cables. You do not want to scratch or ding up your board when doing this and then just keep your screws organized you know exactly where they go and i've removed the sim tray and then we got one connection right here that we're going to remove and then there's going to be a couple more connections under here but so what i like to do before removing the motherboard is to go ahead and start removing the battery so what i do is I'm going to put this whole entire thing on the heater for a good three to five minutes. We want that battery nice and toasty so we can uh, loosen up that glue underneath. This is a perfect time to replace your battery with a brand new one if it has two years or more use on it. So go ahead and just order that battery and that way um, you have a new one. Either way, that battery has to be removed. There are other options by removing tape. And that's a nightmare. I don't recommend it this that way, um, especially for amateurs. And also, um, either way, you have to remove it because you got to get to con some components underneath it. So I'd recommend getting and making sure you have this eye plastic tool. This is going to be the safest way to remove it. Um, if you don't do it that way, life is going to be miserable. Oh, yeah. And don't forget to put that front camera plug in. So we're going to do that now. You don't want to leave that exposed for too long. Shorter the better. And I might, I'm thinking about it, I might not want to put this down yet. Yeah, I'm not going to put that down quite yet um, because I'm pretty sure you have to weave some cables around in a certain order. And so we're going to not do that at the moment. So what I'm doing here is bending these cables up a little bit so I have some room to work with. Now for the side, if you're replacing the, um, the front screen as well, all you have to do is get the tape that comes with it and stick it on and you'll have some stickiness. Or you can use T7000, which is what we're going to do. That's a water sealant and it's going to help keep this foam water 
uh, resistance. Um, so, yep, just recommend one of those two. We're going to use T7000 today, though. All right, so since we're going to have to wait for that to warm up, let's go ahead and put our SIM tray in. And this cable has to be above that one, but that cable is still below, so be aware of that. Check your orientation. Okay, so I'm going to put this screw in last, and I'll show you why here in a minute. This screw first. Make sure you line it up properly. Before we put that screw in, you want to make sure it slides in here, the, the original SIM. And if it's not scratched, you don't need to put the new one on. But if it is, you can grab the new one that comes with the frame. So it sticks in there properly. Now we're going to go ahead and carefully set this piece on. And it have to be sitting exactly just like this. <clears throat> if it moves, you'll have to adjust it. If it's too far over, or um, you're going to basically run into where it hits the screen and cause you problems when putting it together. We want it back oh, up and over on the loudspeaker here. So now it's being held. Okay, nice and tight. Okay, now that we got the SIM tray in, we can set this back aside, touch our battery. If it's feeling hot to the touch, which it is, we're going to go ahead and start removing it. You want to do this quickly because it does cool down fast. So I like to bend my tool here, my eye plastic tool, up and around the battery here. And get underneath the battery, make sure you're underneath it. And then shove it. Now, if you're not careful, you're going to damage uh, the front camera cables and then you'll lose face ID. This is why I use the eye plastic tool. Because if you use metal tools, you can damage it. If it's giving you too much problems, then make sure you warm it up a little bit more. And now that it's starting to lift, perfect. Now we should be able to easily pull it up. Just press down a little bit and then just wiggle it out. Wiggle it out. You don't want to bend the battery and causing it to explode. You got to be really careful. If you puncture this battery or bend it, at all, then you basically are going to explode your battery. Now, my battery or my new frame comes with new tape, so I'm just going to reuse that or use that tape. If yours doesn't, try reusing the tape, and if you still don't have tape, use T7000. Okay, now that our battery is out, I clean that off and I cleaned it while it's hot, mind you. Um, then we can start taking out the front camera and face ID components. Set that off to the side. And now we can carefully remove the glue without shaking the table like crazy. Now, you don't have to do this. Um, I just did it because, I don't know, I didn't really think about it. I don't have to do it. I just did it. <laughs> so these are really delicate here. So here's that plastic tool I was talking about where my fingernails will not be able to get into. 
and just check your orientation. See, I'm looking at how it's done. Motherboard should come up now. It does. It should. Okay, it does. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to transfer the motherboard. This is where all your data and pretty much all the magic happens. I'm going to stick it underneath those cables right there. And I just realized that this screw here, we want to leave out. That's your um, SIM tray here. I do believe it's underneath. We'll find out here in one minute. That's a, this is the kind of a challenging part. Be really careful. It's the second most challenging. That battery is pretty much the most most challenging. All right, it does stick up and above is what I can see. We're gonna go ahead and put one screw here. Now, before connecting all these, or before screwing down the board, I like to connect all the cables and make sure everything's properly lined up. So, first things first is you can take your plastic tool or some tweezers and clip these cables in. If they're not lined up properly, you have to push the cables away from the board, then press in. And that's what I'm kind of trying to do here right now. I'll try it with my fingers. You got really big fingers like me, you may have a bad time. You do not want to scrape or slip here. So you want to damage the board. What I'm trying to do is bend this cable back. I wish I bent it back a little bit before putting the board in. There we go. Then you want to make sure it's clipped in. Does it feel clipped in? Yes, it does. Double check it. Make sure it's not loose and go to the next cable. This, they don't make any obvious clicking or clamping noise, unfortunately. That one did. These two did not. They're very mildly connected. I think that's why there's a bracket there, guys. Okay, let's go ahead and double check. We got all the small components from over here to there. If you don't, you need to transfer. Even those gold contacts, they all need to be there. Everything looks legitimate. Now we're going to go ahead and set the front camera and the, the face ID sensor. You do not want to touch those front cameras. Be really careful not to touch them. Um, they're very hard to clean properly. And so just don't touch them and then you don't have to. All right, now for our bracket. bracket looks like it sits uh, okay so our camera needs to move up and over the bracket there we go put this piece here okay this bracket actually looks like it's going to clip on over there there we go it's hard to describe um, hmm Think of Tetris, this thing is like gripping underneath the board over there. Okay, now that I got that properly clipped, well, I wanna put one screw down just so nothing moves on me. Just this other screw or this other hole here and put this screw down here. That way none of those cables are gonna get loose on me. All right, 
And you can put part of the Face ID front camera sensor right there. And our front camera here. And the second, or rear camera, excuse me. These are rear camera. Oops, those go in the last. All right, now let's put our bracket in that we talked about. Now, this bracket has some little bars off to the side here that goes under the frame. And it's hard to describe, but see the little two holes right here? Jeez. And I'm sure you guys are not going to see this even with post zoom. So you see those two holes right there? This bracket needs to go in between those two holes. It's important or the phone is just not going to sit right when you put the new screen in. Put the two screws. Oops, that one slipped. Magnetizing your screws and having good screwdrivers is always critical. Okay, so we got three clips here to clip in. And these are always just so fun. Thank you, Apple. Get your eyeballs nice and close to it. You know, if you have to get your head right there and do it, I'm staying far away for the camera. So you guys can see what I'm doing here. We want to make sure that clips in properly, but it feels a little loosey goosey. Just go back and make sure it's sitting in there. Now this is your wireless charger. You definitely did not want to sit in there properly. Try again. There we go. Some of these can be quite the pain. Let's get this cable in first. That clipped in right away. That's good. Remember how I told you you have to have the cables oriented right? Now the SIM tray is getting connected here. And I bet you anything, I'm going to have to remove that screw again. Oh, imagine that. I was right. Removing the screw again. So <laughs> this M tray screw guys is the last time you have to put this in, I hope. All right, let's get this screw in here. And the motherboard standoff screw. Okay, and this clip here, you're almost to the point where you can test everything. <laughs> Not crazy. In Face ID, you can't even test until it's all together. That's even more just thanks to Apple. Okay, we're gonna take our new battery or our original battery. If you bent your battery too much, put a new battery in there. If you did really good, then fine. But just remember, if you do bend your battery, um, explosions can and will happen. So just be aware of that. Oh yeah, that's your motherboard. Uh, customer asked a good question. Is all his stuff going to still be there? And yes, that's because all your data is on your motherboard. Now, if you can't find anybody locally to do this, we'd be glad to do this. You can always mail in your device to us. But it ain't cheap. Stick battery pieces back on. Right. Now, 
if you want to test it before sticking all this battery in, then probably you should do that. But I'm pretty confident we're gonna have this problem fixed because I tried to use all original parts. So now I'm gonna go ahead and clip the battery in so I can push it forward and then set it flat down. So it should be sitting right there, push forward and then over there a little bit. Now, some things I have no clue why Apple includes, like this piece here, but because they do, I am going to put it back in the phone. I could put it in before putting the battery down, but frankly, they don't like to stay if you do that. Before I glue everything down, I do still want to test because glue is a pain to deal with if you... Oh, and let's make sure the battery's disconnected. Clip everything in here. Battery's fully dead, so I ain't worried. That's because the charge port was unfortunately bad. Now. Uh, next option is to charge the device. Unfortunately, we don't have a fast charger here, but I got one in my car. But I just want to make sure it's indicating charging here. It is. So I'm going to go plug in my fast charger and get it up to 5%. I'll be right back. All right. So now that we got the phone to 5% here, we're going to go ahead and just turn it off. And we're going to get some T7000 out. Like I said, you can use the glue from... Uh, you can use the glue from... Um, like a new screen. They typically give you like a uh, tape here. Which... Not on this one. It's usually on originals. I'll show you guys. See, this is the tape here. You can just order the tape by itself, I think. Don't quote me on that. Or you just use C7000 because it's your best friend. It's a better sealant than Apple's anyways. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect that screen again. And we're going to go ahead and run the sealant. You don't want to go crazy on it. You don't want sealant all in your phone here, guys. Now, IG does sell the back frame, but they, you have to transfer even more components, and I don't like to. You can uh, send this off to my guy in Vegas. He can refurbish the back for you if you don't want to take your whole phone apart. Um, or if you want just a spare, he can refurbish it. But if it's heavily dinged or dented, I don't recommend it. This repair is great for just trying to save some money in general. And something that a lot of people can do with the proper components and parts, which is the small parts. Just transferring a charge port and all that is just so much more of a nightmare, to be honest. But you can do it, just a lot more work. Okay, let me go ahead and connect the face or the ear speaker here. And we're gonna go ahead and connect the LCD cables. And so in, I do plan on making more videos in the future, just like this. They're all detailed videos, I call them. 
And then there are videos that are going to be called quick overview. And these quick over video, uh, quick overview videos are going to be much shorter. And it's more for the pros who already kind of know what they're doing and less detail, less talk. But overall, you can get in and out of the video much faster. So if you ever see a quick overview of this video pop up, then that was it. get these screws in just right. The T7000 starts drying after a couple minutes so you just don't want to take too much time putting this in. It is not required to have any glue in between but I highly recommend having some kind of barrier uh, from the outside. Oh, come on. Just getting this lined up just correctly is always fun. Okay, we got that. We're now ready to seal the phone. All original parts. He's got that new charge port. He's got a new back that's not broken anymore. He basically has a brand new phone. And Apple would charge you $400 for this. Yeah, so. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you guys going all the way to the end to watch this video. I hope it helps you uh, in your future endeavors to doing phone repairs and more detailed videos like this coming in the future. Please like and subscribe and thank you very much. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.